Hello, in today's class, we are going to see what is the position vector and the concept of trajectory. We will talk about reference system, position vector, displacement vector, and path traveled along the trajectory. And all this, as always, in our usual scenario, in our basketball court. And with the objective of helping Jay to score a well-deserved three-pointer. In this case, in this occasion, we are going to study the movement of the ball. And the first thing we need is a reference system that allows us to know the position occupied by the object at any time. That is to say, the reference system will give us the spatiotemporal information of the object under study. The reference system consists of an origin, which is a point where the observer is located, and a coordinate system, which is a set of values that allow us to univocally define the position of any point in space. On this occasion, we have chosen a Cartesian coordinate system. Descartes was the first to express the position of a point in space. And he did so by three straight lines perpendicular to each other and intersecting at the origin. These are the Cartesian axes x, y, and z. And to express the position of the point in space, he measured the distance from the point to the various axes as shown on the screen. These distances x, y, and z are the coordinates of point P. On these Cartesian axes are defined three unit vectors, i, j, k, perpendicular to each other, which are also called versors. These versors allow us to express any vector in space from its Cartesian components. For example, we see a vector a that has an origin point and an end point. These points can be expressed by their Cartesian coordinates x, y, and z. If we call the components of vector A, we call them A sub x, A sub y, and A sub z, the Cartesian components. The vector can be expressed as it appears on the screen. A sub x times the unit vector y plus A sub y times the unit vector j plus A sub z times the unit vector k. Although we can find in other bibliographies the vector expressed only by its components A sub x, A sub y, and A sub z separated by commas. The components of the vector are calculated from the coordinates of the origin point and the end point. For example, the x component would be the x coordinate of the end point minus the x coordinate of the origin point. The same with the y component and the z component. To calculate the length of vector a, that is its modulus, we have to calculate the square root of the sum of its components squared. But we must not forget that what we want to study is the motion of the ball over time. The curve described by the moving object in the course of time is called trajectory, and we have represented it in green. If we call P, the point where the object is on the trajectory, we see that its coordinates depend on the time instant t in which we are. The position vector is defined as the vector that joins the origin of the Cartesian axis with the point P where the object is located. And then we call it R. Its components, therefore, also depend on the instant t in which we are. For example, after an incremental time interval of t, we see that the ball arrives at the basket. At this instant of time, both the coordinates of point P and the components of the position vector have changed. The displacement vector is defined as the vector joining two positions at two different instants. For example, at instant t, the ball is in this position. At instant t, plus increment of t, it is in the basket. Then, in this case, the displacement vector increment r is the vector joining these two positions. We can see graphically that the displacement vector is the position vector at instant t, plus the increment of t, minus the position vector at instant t. This vector subtraction is done by components. We see it here. If we call the increments of x, y, and z the Cartesian components of the displacement vector. Okay, this is calculated as shown here. For example, the x component would be the x component of the position vector at instant t plus the increment of t minus the x component of the position vector at the instant t. We would do the same with the y and z components. The last magnitude we have left to cover in today's class is the path traveled along the trajectory, which we will call the increment of s. It is a scalar quantity that is also related to the displacement, 
but concretely with the displacement on the trajectory. You see it here painted in black. The increment of s normally does not coincide with the modulus of the displacement vector, that is, the length of this vector only coincides if the trajectory is rectilinear and non-return. For example, in this case, in which the ball leaves J's hands and returns to its initial position. The displacement vector is zero, while the increment of S, that is the path traveled along the trajectory, is evidently different from zero. But it seems that J is not very certain about this. Well, the time has come for Amanda to remind us of the most important things we have seen in class. We have seen the need to use a reference system to univocally define the position of an object in space. In this case, we have used the Cartesian axis and the temporal variable t. We have expressed the position vector by its Cartesian components. We have seen that they depend on the instant t in which we are. We have seen the displacement vector increment of r as the subtraction of the position vector at two different instants and that its modulus only coincides with the increment of s with the path traveled on the trajectory if the movement is rectilinear and non-return. All these physical quantities are measured in the international system in meters. See you soon.